Hey everyone, welcome back to the Niche Pursuits podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Hawes from nichepursuits.com. And today I've got a guest that I'm going to interview and his name is Goran Duskic. And he owns whoapi.com and also webmaster.ninja. And we're gonna talk a little bit about both of those. But before we do, I just want to go ahead and welcome Gorn onto the show. So, Gorn, how are you doing today? Hey, Spencer. Thanks for having me. I just have to say I'm psyched to be on your show. I've been a listener for, uh, I think, maybe two years now, and uh, I just can't wait to get this started. Absolutely. No, I think it's great to have people from different experience on the podcast to hear their story, how they got started online. And I think you can provide that. Uh, perspective, um, a little bit different perspective than we've had from some other interviewees. Uh, and you are located in Croatia, correct? Yeah, that's correct. And I think that's a great thing because I love hearing these stories, international stories, and uh, that really pumps me up and uh, shows me that it's possible to make this happen wherever you are in the world, you know, that uh, you can you can uh, sign up for Amazon Associates, for AdSense, uh, you know, get the checks flying into your country, and uh, each time you have an interview with someone from Scandinavia or uh, somewhere in Asia, it, it really, uh, uh, it's, it's really a different perspective than when you're interviewing some, somebody in New York or, or California. Right. You know, that's a good point. I actually do get a lot of people asking me that question that live internationally. They're asking, you know, mm -hmm. am I able to start an Amazon affiliate website or can I do Google AdSense or can I do this whole niche site thing, even though I'm located in some far off country? And the answer is yes. You know, absolutely. You can build a website that ranks in the United States for certain keywords. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you are physically located. The internet isn't located in one any spot, right? So that's what's great. Anybody exactly. anywhere in the world can do this. So I want to dive into your story. Uh, you have had some success and we're going to dive into what that success is currently today. But <laughs> like anybody, we all start from square one. So where was that square one for you? How did you get started? What was your first online venture, your first attempt to make some money online? Yeah, I, I would say square one for me was uh, basically square zero. <laughs> uh, I was I was I was working in a web design company for a few months and the paycheck was lousy and uh, I was just learning the ins and outs of uh, online marketing in, in general. Basically, this was uh, back in 2005, I think, uh, maybe 2006, because we, uh, we uh, a few of us that were working in this web design company, we decided to start our own company uh, in uh, May 2006. Uh, we basically gathered around. Now, uh, we gathered around, and they asked me, "Hey, Goran, you want to start a company with us? Uh, you can, you can do sales and SEO and uh, all that stuff, and uh, all the design websites. And Eddie here will uh, code them, and we'll start our own company." And uh, this made sense to me because I really wanted to build a portfolio for myself and not for uh, somebody else. So uh, that was basically the beginning for me. It was really uh, day one from scratch with uh, maybe a hundred bucks. In my in my pockets, and uh, I also had to borrow my computer because uh, I was uh, low on cash the month before, and I sold it to a friend of mine, and uh, <laughs> he found a job in Germany, and he was going to leave the computer back home. And uh, his name is uh, Sebastian. I said, "Yo, Sebastian, I know you're going to leave the computer here, and I could really use it for my new web design company. So, uh, can you borrow it to me?" And he said, "Yeah, sure." It was. So uh, that was basically my start, and uh, we built it from there. We uh, started making websites, and uh, in 2011, we sold that uh, web design company we, because we got an idea for uh, for a, a global international startup. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, that's that's a different story, but yeah. uh, that, that would basically be my beginning. No, that sounds good. So you started a web design firm, so you've built a lot of websites, done a lot on the internet for clients. Um, yes. and that business was enough to support you full time or? Yeah, it was supporting the, the three of us at the time, but you know how it is, uh, when you're, when you're pedaling through mud and, uh, you're in this rat race and you're leaving paycheck to paycheck, uh, you're really looking for that, uh, big project for that big change for that big jump. And I was reading a couple of, uh, business books. And uh, the social network movie uh, was in uh, cinemas at the time, and it really blew my mind away 
this whole combination of things. And I, I talked with my partners and I told them, uh, why don't we just focus on web hosting and redesign our website and uh, just uh, as Steve Jobs said in his uh, iPhone presentation, uh, let's make a leapfrog product. Let's make a web hosting product that uh, not of other creation companies can offer. And let's do that. Mm -hmm. So we were redesigning our website and uh, uh, our developer at the time, uh, he was uh, doing this uh, Ajax uh, was the latest uh, hip at the time, uh, this Ajax magic. And we wanted to build a... Uh, a domain checker on the homepage of the website, uh, which would, you know, show the results live. Now, this is common, uh, but back in 20, 2010, when we were redesigning this website, uh, it, was, uh, it wasn't really, <laughs> it wasn't really common at all. Mm -hmm. So we were doing that and uh, he got this idea about uh, a simple API for uh, uh, checking domain name availabilities. Okay. And, and my initial reaction was, oh, my God, not another idea, not another failed project. I don't <laughs> want to build stuff for six months and then realize nobody wants to buy it. Let's, let's just not do that. Uh, but then I got a really crazy idea uh, to build a landing page uh, offering this APIs uh, like we had them. You know, we, we uh, showed the packages, the prices, and we sort of put a pre-order button at the bottom uh, saying that this was about the launch. And if you want to get in line, uh, this is what it's going to cost. We are going to give 50% off to the first uh, clients. So if you're interested, uh, you know, sign up here. I did a couple of backlinks to that landing page, and I started an AdWords campaign. And uh, little by little, some pre-orders started coming. And then on one Saturday morning, we got two pre-orders for uh, worth five hundred dollars uh, each. Nice. Uh, yeah, and this was this was sort of the turning point in our heads because we said, okay, uh, <laughs> like screw this hosting business, <laughs> let's let's do this. This this is because this was just those pre-orders were uh, so much more money than what we were making with the uh, web hosting packages here in right. Croatia. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, and plus, this was uh, this was a global business. Uh, up up to this point, we had clients only in Croatia, and uh, we started fundraising for that uh, for that idea. Basically, at that point, we didn't have anything uh, coded. We built the initial uh, proof of concept, and uh, we decided to sell the web hosting business, both to keep us focused on on this new idea, new project, and to show the investors that we are really serious. Uh, that we are not sitting in two chairs, mm -hmm. uh, that we are gung-ho on this uh, Huawei API thing. To, if I can jump in and just clarify a couple of things here. So mm -hmm. you had your initial web design company from 2005 to 2011 or 2010, roughly. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and sold that company. Uh, yes. And then you started, for a short period of time, you started a web hosting company for webmasters in Croatia. Yeah, right. it was it was basically a spin-off of the original. We just okay. stopped uh, developing websites and other, you know, how clients are. They want a, an SEO campaign. They want uh, you to build them uh, some sort of a widget. They want a CMS for this type of uh, hotel. We just stopped doing all that. And, and we wanted just the... focusing on the hosting for a little yes, bit. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. And and so that was short lived though. Uh, but you were able to still sell the the hosting company itself once you yes, started we, uh, who who API. Yes, we sold it to the largest hosting company here in Croatia, and then we went all in on who API. Okay, very good. So let's talk about who API. You, you did give us a little bit of the story there, how it got started, the, the yes. pre-orders that really got you guys excited to continue to mm -hmm. pursue that. And then went out and did some fundraising. Um, and I haven't talked a lot about fundraising on uh, the Niche Pursuits podcast. So that's sort of an interesting <laughs> perspective that you can bring here. Um, how did you go about doing that? How much money did you raise? Um, it was it was really a, a new thing for us. In Croatia, fundraising is really something that uh, has a different perspective, a new perspective. When I raised... So I raised a total of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars over the course of a few years. Mm -hmm. But at the at one point, I raised uh, from uh, an American investor fifty thousand dollars on an event in in Zagreb. Zagreb is the capital of Croatia. So these investors flew in from 
uh, Silicon Valley and uh, they uh, sponsored an event. And uh, I pitched Who API on this event and I won on the event. Awesome. And yeah, that was it was crazy. It was it was so much more than awesome. All the media uh, flew around us. I had interviews hmm. uh, every day. Uh, it was really crazy because this was the first time in Croatia that a startup would get an investment on the spot because uh, this investor was new. He never heard about Who API. Uh, but uh, on the stage, he saw my presentation and decided to invest. Uh, now, the reason he invested was because he is uh, one of the initial, uh, initial investors in SendGrid, uh, okay. which is now a, this is now a billion dollar company yes. on the stock market. Yeah. So uh, he invested in SendGrid and SendGrid is basically uh, when, it, when SendGrid started, it was an SMTP API. So it was an a API company. He also in, invested in Twilio which is a telecommunications API. So this investor understood API. And we, when he saw uh, at the main API, uh, who is API, he thought, okay, this, this is like the next big thing. Yeah, that's very interesting. Okay, so 250,000 total, the yes. 50,000 from that one investor. And uh, yeah, just really interesting that you're able to get some media interviews and and all of that. That's, that's sort of a different story than I've ever experienced. So I, I can appreciate that perspective there. So give us a very short reason why a webmaster or somebody listening into the uh, Niche Pursuits mm -hmm. podcast would want to use Who API. Sure. I'm, I'm a little bit afraid to go into the PB, PBNs uh, because some of our clients, for example, were building PBNs. So no, they were basically... Fine. If that's what they're doing, <laughs> that's, that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> uh, because they were, they, were using, they were using our API to check the expiration dates on the domain names and uh, domain date for registration, you know, for domain age. And uh, they would uh, then look up those domain names and uh, eventually, uh, if possible, register them. And offer them for sale for the building uh, of, of a new PBN. So they they didn't put a large list, I would have to assume, right, of, of domains, some some extensive list of domains, and they'd monitor that, monitor that until it was available based on your APIs, you know, when your API set, right? Yeah, well, so some some have and some some did some did do a lot of checks uh, for for domain availability yeah. because they were looking for domains with the different extensions uh, mm. from from around the world. But anyway, this is just one 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 uh, use case that uh, sort of I remembered it first uh, because uh, you were uh, burnt with the PBNs yes. and I know some of your listeners are familiar with with that uh, yep. uh, with that technique and the dangers from it. So that, that's uh, one one way, and the other is uh, just for finding uh, domain names. Uh, let me see. Uh, but uh, to be to be honest, uh, the the main reason why why I uh, started building Webmaster Ninja uh, that you've mentioned mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning was because I wanted to create a product that's more uh, suited for webmasters and uh, people such as myself, uh, because I'm not a, uh, I'm not a developer and uh, an API is a really, really technical product. And it's really hard for a non-technical person to sell a really technical product, especially when it's a uh, B2B. So you have large sales cycles and it's not really something that, uh, you know, a large corporation is going to come on the website, uh, swipe that cred the, their credit card and uh, start using this uh, SaaS tool from the get go. So th this, th this was one of the toughest challenges for me. And that's that's why I uh, started uh, moving into the webmaster.ninja uh, project. OK, now that makes sense. Um, so can you give us an idea of what sort of success you've been able to achieve with Who API or I know Webmaster Ninja is pretty new as well, but uh, whatever you're yes. willing to share there. But specifically, Who API, and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that's that's your <laughs> largest business currently. Um, yep. And uh, yeah, just how did you get to where you're at today? Yeah, uh, well, with Who API, it was really an uphill battle with just because of the things that I've just mentioned. And uh, I've managed to build it uh, up to something like uh, $5,000 per month of uh, revenue. Mm -hmm. Which is, it, it's really, um, it's really hard to to say if that's that's a failure or success. You know, if you think about 
how much money we've raised. It sounds like a failure because uh, it's very hard to return the investment uh, to the investors. Um, but that's that's uh, that's too long a uh, talk to start uh, <laughs> for this podcast. Really, I mean the whole fundraising process and how the money was spent because we went to Silicon Valley for four months. Uh, we burned through a lot of cash over there. Uh, then coming back and then uh, trying to explain to the team why we didn't raise a million dollars and how they are going to have to keep working until this stuff works. Mm -hmm. You know uh, that not some investor or anybody outside of our team is going to fix our problems, find our clients, uh, develop the solution, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, after being through all that uh, scenario, I'm happy and proud that I'm able to reach this type of revenue because at one point I was uh, back in my uh, bedroom uh, making maybe $500 a month with Huey API and still we uh, up to that point we've uh, churned through something like $200 which is definitely not something I would wish to anybody uh, mm -hmm. on the on their back and going to bed so uh to 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 respond to your your uh, comment on how this is a much different perspective, it's a very very uh, high roll, high risk type of game, and I really like much more the approach where uh, you invest uh, maybe a thousand dollars or a few thousand dollars, and then you start getting initial traction by just by some clicks, by some content, you know, by some visitors and then trying to convert those few uh, hundred visitors, uh, thousand visitors, and then grow it from there uh, or organically. It's, it's much less stress-free and uh, it gives you the opportunity to uh, uh, cash in on your passion. So do you think that you would ever raise money again or would you just always, do you think you'll always just try to do more of a bootstrapped approach? I think, you know, it's, it's, I'm one of those guys that is, it's hard for me to say never, say never, you know? Sure. Uh, but, uh, at this point, I am very, very far away from raising money ever again. Yeah. I think it's, it's one of those things. It's a lesson learned and I wouldn't change anything because I've learned so much, but it's just not the route that, uh, I, I don't know. I, ju I just wouldn't. Sure. Let's, uh, ju let's just leave it at that. Yeah, I mean, it comes with, when you raise money, it comes with a lot of strings attached. As you mentioned, you've got investors yes. that you need to repay and they're following up with you and those sorts of things. So it, it does add some additional challenges. Absolutely. And yes. I've always done things in a, in a bootstrapped way. And so I do like that approach. Uh, I really admire that. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I think it's great to be able to work on something and build it using your own money. Uh, not only because you don't have that added pressure for something to absolutely work. Um, you know, part of my process, to be honest, is I've tried so many different ideas um, and a lot of them don't gain any traction. And mm -hmm. it's OK for me to just say, well, I'll try something else until yeah. something does stick and it works. Um, and if you're raising money, you kind of have to make that one thing work. And sometimes yes. that can be difficult. Um, you know, sometimes that's the part of the process of building a business is trying lots of ideas and figuring out which one works best uh, for you. So to kind of wrap up the Who API story, it's making around $5,000 a month now. I have to assume that's enough to support you and uh, the couple of employees uh, as well exactly. that are working on the team, right? Yeah, exactly. Good. Uh, very good. And so is a lot of your focus now on webmaster.ninja uh, or do you have other projects as well that you're spending some time on? Uh, yeah, so that's a great question. So initially I started uh, pivoting to Webmaster Ninja and I think around right about that time I started listening to your podcast, uh, which which really uh, turned me on and motivated me and inspired me and, uh, and really everything. And I don't just say this because I'm on your podcast. But it really did. I mean, it's really hard when you're driving a car, you know, for mm -hmm. like 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and you listen to an interview from someone who, you know, made the jump from uh, quitting his job or started uh, traveling around the world while working and uh, making money online and uh, 
doing uh, the affiliate marketing and AdSense and uh, um, all that stuff. And uh, even even with you, I mean, when you started Amazon FBA, I was crazy just listening about it. Okay, so he's going to start there. And uh, then, uh, you know, a couple of uh, car drives later, uh, here you were making a few thousand dollars uh, per, per month. And I'm, I'm like, right. my head is spinning, my head is spinning and uh, you you just... I'm just that kind of type of person who wants to do that, you know, once you see that it's possible. So while I was uh, listening to your podcast, I uh, finally decided to to start trying making money with affiliate marketing and uh, AdSense and uh, uh, everything really that's available. And uh, this this is ridiculous for me because uh, it's been a while since the first time I've heard this uh, opportunity. And uh, the first time I've heard it, I couldn't set an account from Croatia because they weren't sending checks to Croatia. Okay. So back, yeah, back then it was okay. No, no good because I can't, you know, I, I think I looked at the uh, commission junction and uh, those types of services. So uh, it's, it, it really took me a while to, to uh, hop on that uh, bandwagon, but I'm really happy that I did. And uh, I've started building my own sites and uh, redesigning some of the old sites that I had uh, that I had neglected and I even bought uh, uh, several websites to just sort of to learn some of the processes that other have uh, implemented and uh, uh, just out of the uh, common sense, you know, uh, for uh, I'm also investing in websites to save money. So sure. instead of just putting money aside, I just buy a website with, uh, with a great domain name, with uh, great backlinks. Uh, instead of money just laying around in a bank account, uh, I own a website that uh, is making me money every month. So it's sort of like uh, instead of buying stocks uh, and dividend payout, uh, I invest in the website. I love it. And you know that I appreciate that as well. Um, over, just over the last few months, I bought a couple of uh, websites, larger websites. I bought <laughs> one in uh, March and one in May. Um, that's, mm -hmm. you know, in the last five months ish, uh, I bought mm -hmm. a couple of large websites. So I like your approach as well. I do love investing in websites, both building and buying them. I think it's a great approach. Um, mm -hmm. are you, are you willing to share how much your portfolio of websites is making you right now? Just overall? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, yeah sure. So it, it's around a thousand dollars per month and, uh, I've, I think I started something like a year ago. Uh, and what I really love about this uh, is that, uh, you can start with uh, as few as a uh, few hundred dollars. Right. So this doesn't have to be a big investment. And, uh, uh I'm willing to share a, a story that, that was really painful for me. Okay. So uh, back in 2013, I was, uh, I had the same idea because, uh, I, I just uh, got back from the Silicon Valley and, uh, uh, the Huawei API startup wasn't doing so well, and I was thinking, okay, what can I do? What can I do? And I saw some website on Flippa uh, making money, and I did the due diligence, the you know, to the best of my ability. I logged into Google Analytics. The traffic seemed natural, and the AdSense screenshot was there, etc. And the website was priced at two thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and I was thinking, okay, this is a great deal. Blah blah blah. Long story short. Uh, once I purchased the website and once I uh, switched the AdSense account, I think maybe a month later, I uh, clicked to withdraw the funds and my AdSense account got banned. Oh, no. And, oh, yes. And <laughs> uh, I realized that probably the, the traffic on the website uh, that was sh shown in Google Analytics was probably fake and the clicks on the AdSense were probably fake because mm. you know how it is uh, with with the Google team and the AdSense team, they are really not that, uh, commu you know, the communication is not their strong suit when it comes right. to explaining. <laughs> they don't really so, tell you what's going on, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that really uh, messed me up because I was at a low point in my life. Plus, uh, I didn't have a ton of money to spare and I consider myself, you know, sort of an expert in, uh, you know, uh, the websites and the Google Analytics and all that. So uh, that really, that really bugged me. And I stayed away for 
yeah, for four years or or something to get to you know to gather the courage and to go into it again. Yeah, you know, it's. I think it's important to share sort of the failures along with the successes. Um, and of course, I know that that you followed along with my story, so you know that I've had a Google AdSense account shut down on me. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. it's really frustrating. Um, and it can be almost depressing, right? I mean, it can make yeah. you not want to get back up and, and try again. Um, I've yeah. had websites that have been hit in Google. You know, I've had the PBN sort of uh, mm-hmm. hit from Google, the PBN penalty. Uh, I've gone through a lot of different penalties and, and been shut down uh, in different ways, but I've always got back up. I tried again and... You know, I'm, I'm glad I did because I've been able to build a lot of successful things. I've had a couple of really successful exits. Um, you know, I sold my Amazon FBA business that you mentioned for, you know, a, a healthy mid six figure amount in mm-hmm. uh, eight months ago or nine months ago at this point, I guess. And of course, I've got other websites that are doing very well now. Uh, so Along with those difficulties, I think it's important to take the lessons and, and learn from that. And so I yeah. imagine that, you know, even though it took a couple of years for you to kind of get back in the saddle and, and try doing affiliate websites, it sounds like you've learned some lessons now and your totally. portfolio is making, you know, $1,000 a month. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great. And the best thing about it, the same with the uh, API and uh, Webmaster Ninja is because, uh I have clients around the world and if I want to like uh, this spring, if I want to go to the South of Spain for uh, a month, no problem. I'll just take my laptop and uh, we'll, we'll go there and work from there and enjoy uh, mild winters and the uh, beautiful sun and the palm trees. So that's sort of the, 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 the lifestyle that I really want for myself and for, for my fiance. So mm-hmm. uh, that to me, that's, that's the base, the, the, the best thing. Plus, it's uh, it's very easy to scale. If you diversify your portfolio, you get also uh, some some uh, security from from risk, and uh, you get to learn a lot about different niches. About uh, you, you can uh, explore your passions. Uh, I know you're you were into uh, army knives for a while. It, it got to a right. point it was uh, <laughs> it got to a point it was it was hard uh, listening to another. Army Life's uh, keyword research story, but uh, <laughs> so that's that's just the way that goes. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. So to give people an idea, and also I, you know, I don't know what is sort <laughs> of the average income of somebody in Croatia. What's sort of <laughs> a yeah, just a, a normal income? I would yeah, I would say a thousand dollars per month is like an average uh, good income okay. that that can support. You and uh, your small small family, maybe mm-hmm. something like that. Okay, yeah. no, that's good. I, I think that gives people perspective. I mean, obviously, we listeners here in the United States, they might think, oh, he's only making a thousand dollars a month from his you know portfolio of websites, or five thousand dollars a month. That's, I mean, that's a yeah. significant amount of money with, yeah, sort of the, the living wage that's needed in Croatia. So I think that's important to realize. Yeah. Yeah. Rent for a, rent for a two bedroom apartment in my town is 250 euros. So that's around $300 per month. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, if I were to find something similar around here, it's easily going to be, you know, $1,200 a month or something like that. Um, yeah. I, where I I'm know, living. But I- and yeah, much more in, in California and other places. I was just going to say, yeah, when I was in Mountain View, two bedroom apartment cost us uh, $3,000 a yeah, month. Yeah, yeah. I'm so not surprised at all. It's a different story. Yeah, <laughs> it is. So uh, very good. So what is next for you? What's your what, where's your focus right now or what what's your next big project? If you have any other big projects planned? Yeah, so uh, currently I'm uh, on webmaster.ninja and uh, I wanted to offer a free three-month trial to all the listeners and uh, Niche Pursuits uh, readers. Okay, uh, that would be great. Yeah, we, we we don't have that much paying clients at the moment for Webmaster Ninja, just, uh, just a dozen, but it's helped me track my own per- portfolio. And, uh, you know, it's connected with Google Analytics and uh, live screenshots and uh, website monitoring and all that stuff. So 
Uh, I log in uh, each morning and each uh, evening just to see how my portfolio is doing. If, if something out of the ordinary has happened, you know, these things uh, do do occur, you know, your mm -hmm. uh, well, not not to <laughs> not to create a, a scary image, but uh, bad stuff happens to the websites. So I'm mostly doing that. And right now I'm uh, trying to find somebody uh, who would be willing to go with me on a free coaching one-on-one uh, -on -one for six months to, to help this one person to start their journey. And uh, similar like an inside project, uh, but not in that extent. Right. I, I just want one person just to see if if I can help somebody uh, start living the way I'm living. It's basically like giving back to the community. Awesome, man. That That is really uh, kind of you to be able to do that. So for people to go to webmaster.ninja and get that three months free, where where do they need to go? Is there a specific URL or how would you like them to do that? Just sign up on the main homepage. There's a button, sign up, join the, you know, join the fight, sign up there. When they're logged in inside the admin, there's, you know, there's like a support button. Just send them a message or email me uh, saying, hey, I'm from Spencer. Uh, yep. And that's that that should be enough. OK, you know, I don't if if 100 people come, I'll be I'll, I'll be overwhelmed, by, but I don't expect such a huge crowd. <laughs> so I think this will work. OK, yeah, no, that sounds good. So people can go to webmaster ninja. Go ahead and sign up. And then uh, once they're in there, they can hit the support button, send you an email, send you a message and just let them know, hey, you're uh, coming from Niche Pursuits. You want that three months free and uh, Goran will hook you up with that. So that sounds Absolutely. good. Uh, and then for the um, sort of coaching that you want to help one person along with one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching, how can they get in touch with you to do that? Also on webmaster.ninja on the blog. I've started writing a series of uh, of this process of how you get from zero to one hundred dollars a month, and uh, on each of those posts, uh, there's there's like a call to action uh, where they can sign up. Okay, very good. So that is uh, yeah. If you go to the homepage on webmaster.ninja, you can see the blog link, or you can go to webmaster.ninja/blog, and then uh, yeah, just click on any of the posts, and you can see that call to action there where you can exactly. sign up and get in touch with Goran. So uh, very good. That sounds good. Uh, do you have any additional closing thoughts, any uh, words of motivation or just anything else that you want to uh, share before we wrap up the podcast? Sure. I have a question for you. Okay. Uh, I was listening to all the podcasts, so I know that uh, I have the opportunity. I wanted. To, I was thinking hard about asking you a question because uh, you've shared so much uh, but I wanted to to get your opinion on buying a premium domain name. Have you ever done it? And if so, uh, why? And if not, uh, why not? Great question. Um, I have never bought a premium domain name, uh, mm -hmm. believe it cool. or not. But, well, first, the, the reason that I haven't is because I guess I always do consider myself, you know, I'm the bootstrapped guy. I always start things mm -hmm. cheap. And so when I can buy a domain name for 10 bucks versus one for, you know, several thousand dollars, I've always just gone cheap until I figure out if the idea is going to work or not. Uh, I do know several other, other people that have bought premium domain names. And I think that's this has been shared publicly other places um, that uh, Mike Jackness, he runs um, several e-commerce stores, including colorit.com and, and other sites. He, like he's purchased treadmill.com and I think icepacks.com. Um, and the reason that he and other people do that, of course, is just because of the short, memorable domain. There can be a lot of value there in terms of both branding and link mm -hmm. building, right? When you reach out to other people and you have that short premium domain name, uh, a lot of people would be much more willing to reference and link to your website. It's, it just seems like a more established uh, type business. But um, so, yeah, that's that's sort of my thoughts on, on premium domains. Yeah, but I would conclude that you did just fine without them. <laughs> yeah, right. so far, so good. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. I, I think you can. I think you can do just fine without them. 
you know, maybe the approach, and I haven't done this, but I could see myself doing this someday is if you have a business, you know, that you start from scratch, you just hand register a domain for 10 bucks. Uh, if it starts to take off and do really well, you can always go back and say, okay, now maybe I want that premium one word domain. You can go back later after you've been running the business for a year or two years and then buy that premium domain and, and just switch your domain name. So I could see myself potentially doing that in the future, but uh, so far I haven't done it. Yeah. Sounds great. If I, if I can to wrap things up, one last thing, just, just to uh, try to motivate the guys listening in. I know that it's really hard to, to jump, jump ship uh, because I've, you know, at first I quit my job to start uh, the web design company. And, uh, and the last thing that I did before I uh, started uh, buying uh, niche websites, niche websites and uh, building them, I did have to talk with my investors, uh, explaining them, look, who API is not going to become this next $10 million company. It's, it's making a, a solid income for myself. We have this nice clients around the world, but it is going to be very, very hard, if not impossible, to get a return on investment for you guys. I did the best that I could for the past of seven years, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I'm I'm going to seek other adventures. Basically, that's yeah. what I've told them, and it's been the hardest thing that I had to do in my life, uh, businessly, uh, business speaking. So I totally understand some of the guys listening and uh, how hard it is uh, to jump ship, but. I'm telling you, it's really, it's really easy and it's not that expensive to, to start dabbling, at least start dabbling into it, uh, build a new website or buy some small website on Flippa for a few hundred dollars. Even if you get burned for the few hundred dollars, you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna cry over that, uh, spilled milk, but it's, it's going to get your feet in the water. And I think that's the most important thing. Uh, just, just starting and, and committing to, to this, uh, journey. I think that's great advice. I do think that people can get started with very little money. Just put in some effort. You can even start from scratch, do everything yourself and learn the ropes. And it's very possible that you can build something uh, significant. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, I bought this one website and it was uh, a seasonal website. And I thought that I made the wrong investment. I basically, I just, I just put it off. I said, oh, okay. So I, I messed up with this one. And then when spring came along, some guy bought some boat on Amazon uh, for a thousand dollars and I got twenty five dollars affiliate commission. And I found out about that a week later after it happened. And I was like, this website was not a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it is still making money. So even even those types of ridiculous stories can happen. And, and I really encourage everybody to to start this. And I'm not afraid. Uh, I uh, often people ask me, aren't you afraid that somebody is going to, uh, you know, if everybody starts doing that, there's that, hey, there's so many niches like uh, hiking, like cooking, like uh, fitness, like this, there's so many things, uh, there's there's just uh, no way it's, it's going to be filled so quickly. So right. I go for it. Great advice. There is a lot of opportunity out there. Goran, I appreciate you coming on the Niche Pursuits podcast. It's been a pleasure hearing about your story. And um, if people want to follow along with you, I assume the best place is to go to webmaster.ninja, correct? Yeah, that's correct. It's been a real pleasure uh, talking to you uh, for the first time and uh, being on the Niche Pursuits podcast. Uh, real honor and I can't wait for this uh, to go live. Very good. Thanks again, Gorn, for being on the podcast and thank you everybody for listening.